Hey y'all, so I wanted to make this video really quickly. Um, I know it's the holiday season and we all have a lot of shit that we have to do, um, but I wanted to make this video before the new year. So I wanted to give you a quick update on how Jeremy's doing. Jeremy is fine. The court dates right now are still the same. Um, there was an opportunity to kind of have it a little earlier, but that didn't work out. So for right now, what you're seeing online is pretty much accurate. Things have been relatively quiet. Um, you know, obviously Jeremy is working with Amir to get everything together so we can prove all the lies and whatnot. So that's the update on Jeremy's recent situation. I wanted to talk to you all about something that continuously comes up um, for me personally, and it's something I want to talk about, and I don't think I've ever really talked about it. So the screenshot that you see in the background is from Jeremy's 2005 case, and this is probably like the biggest case that Jeremy's ever had. It involved the whole sex offender situation. Supposedly on October 1st, 2004, and again on November 1st, 2004, Jeremy committed the acts of lewd or lascivious battery. He pled guilty to one of the charges on July 20th, 2005. And then the second charge they never did anything with, they decided not to prosecute him for that. There were never any other charges, just those two. And that was that. The reason why I'm bringing this up now is because, you know, I kind of want to close out the new year with it. But um, the reason I'm bringing it up is I've heard some things from people who have questioned why I'm with Jeremy. And not just because of our own chaos and confusion, but because of this situation. You know, I get emails and all kinds of bullshit all the time and people will ask me, you know, how can you love him and be with him and support him after everything that he did to that girl, like the way he tortured her, everything that he did, how could you be with him? Of course, my response or my reaction to any of that is like, what the fuck are you talking about? Because none of that is true. About a year or so ago, there was an interview on this raggedy YouTube channel that I don't talk about because I don't support it. And when I don't like something and when I don't like someone, I don't go and look and see what they're doing and I don't talk about them. That's the difference between me and a stalker. But about a year or so ago, there was an interview on a raggedy channel and there was a person who claimed to be this victim in this case. The person did this super goofy and really weird interview with the owner of this YouTube channel. And I don't even know how to explain how weird it was, but it was very, very strange. It was the person just kind of speaking about what they claimed happened and then like some other like goofy individual in the background sort of feeding them lines. No one has ever verified to my knowledge who the person actually was, if it was the actual victim or a paid actor or something. I don't think anyone's ever been able to verify that. It was brought to our attention by someone who was a fan of Jeremy's and he, I guess, screen recorded it or something and he said, I want you guys to see this. You need to see what this person is saying. There were a lot of things that kind of stood out about the interview. It was very like cluttered and all over the place. You couldn't really hear her. It was a mess. But I did pick up on a few things. There was a part where this individual, this woman, with the help of whoever the fuck that was in the background feeding her lines, she claimed that she was being tortured by Jeremy. She made some accusations about him cutting her hair and forcing her to wear certain clothes and putting her in a boot camp and putting things inside of her body, like shoving things inside of private parts. It made no sense. But if you didn't know Jeremy's case, if you weren't aware of everything that happened in that case, you would have believed it. And you would have thought that, oh my God, this guy is a fucking monster. Now, during this time, this was when Fiddler still had a job. This was when Ramsey was still with Motors and they were using YouTubers to sort of feed information that they wanted to say. They wanted to defame Jeremy, defame me, defame everyone else around him, but they couldn't do it themselves. So they had these fucking losers do it for them. So they found this person or made up this person, I don't know. And this individual did a fake ass like Barbara Walters interview. I don't know if they were paid for this. I don't know if they just wanted the attention. I don't know what the fuck happened here. But the things that they mentioned in that fake ass interview, 
those things were never mentioned in any police reports. They were never mentioned in any prosecutor's notes. They were never a part of any case, never a part of any transcript. You can't find those accusations anywhere on paper. In the interview, the woman claimed that she didn't know anything that was going on with the case, that they kept her out of the loop. She pretty much threw everyone under the bus. So the prosecutor, the judge, she threw them under the bus and claimed that they never told her anything. Okay, so I wanna show you guys something. So at some point during this case, when it was closed and then reopened and reclosed, there was a transcript that popped up. I'm going to show you a portion of this transcript and then we're gonna kind of go over it. But first, I'm just gonna let this scroll a little bit so you can kind of see what was going on and what they were saying during the hearing. And then I'm just gonna do like a screenshot and show you the part that I want to discuss. I don't know how to pronounce any of these names, um, but Miss P is the prosecutor. Mr. D is Jeremy's defense attorney for this case. And then the court is obviously the judge. So in the transcript, they're discussing Jeremy's 2005 case. This is 2009. Jeremy was given a year and a day with I think 30 days time served um, for the SO situation. You can read all of it yourself, but I'm just gonna read the portion where the court is asking the prosecutor about the original case and then this reopen case. In the transcript, the prosecutor is stating, the notes that I have from the previous prosecutor states that it was a downward departure, had consensual sex with a blank year old girl, the victim and her family were not seeking a long period of incarceration. He was sentenced to one year and one day, followed by five years of SO probation. For those of you who have seen the interview or you heard about it, or you heard about all these horrible things that Jeremy has supposedly done to this person who, again, never verified as the actual victim in the case, this goes against everything that they stated. This woman was claiming that Jeremy basically tortured her. And if that were the case, under Florida law, he would have been charged with aggravated child abuse, which is a first degree felony, and you can face up to 30 years in prison. But he was never charged with aggravated child abuse. He was never charged with any type of child abuse. In fact, the judge gave him a downward departure. For those of you who don't know, a downward departure is basically a fancy way of saying that the judge is going below the lowest allowed sentence. So for example, if the range is between five years and 10 years, so the lowest would be five years, obviously, the max would be 10, the judge would go underneath the five years. So the judge would give him 4.5 years or four years or 3.5 years, so on and so forth. Judges do not hand out downward departures like cookies at a Christmas party. I mean, it's not the easiest thing to get. And you have to have evidence that's supported. There has to be mitigating factors. The court has to assess everything to make sure that this person is eligible for a downward departure. It's basically the judge's way of saying this situation that happened is not that severe. And it's something that, yes, the person should be punished for, but we're not going to give him the maximum for this. It also states in the prosecutor's notes, because this is the prosecutor reading the notes from the previous prosecutor who was actually over the original case. It states that this was consensual sex. Was it appropriate? No, of course not. But was it consensual? Yes, it was. The other part that kind of blows me away is that the prosecutor claims that the victim and her family were not seeking a long period of incarceration. I don't know about you, but if someone were torturing me and cutting my hair, shaving my hair, forcing me to do boot camp, inserting things inside of me, I would raise hell if they were only sentenced to one year and one day. I would never agree to that. In her little interview, she claimed that she had no idea that Jeremy was only gonna be serving a year and a day. But I just showed you in this video that the judge asked the prosecutor. She said, okay, the original sentence, was that agreed to? by the victim. I know that they were trying to sell some sort of bootleg lifetime movie version of this, but that's not how it goes. This person wants you to believe that the first prosecutor, the second prosecutor, the first judge, and the second judge never verified 
if any of this was okay with her. In the interview, she also mentioned her family and how her family was in the courtroom and her family was shielding her away from everything and she didn't know anything and her family was evil and all this other bullshit. But what she didn't talk about was why she was staying with extended family. Now, this is information that came out during depots, I believe, and also when they were just talking to the family members because, of course, the defense attorney is going to ask, okay, where are her parents? Where's her mom? Where's her dad? Why is she staying with you? The family started stating that she used to live in New York with her mom and her stepdad. Supposedly, she was getting in trouble in New York, so she had been stealing something. That's what the stepdad claimed, that she got caught stealing something, and the stepdad kind of lost it, and they got into it, and shortly thereafter, she made an accusation against her stepfather. So supposedly, there was this whole investigation because she claimed that he was physically abusing her and other things um, and nothing really came of that the mother decided to you know kind of ship her off to family in Florida Jeremy has always stated that she was being untruthful about her age and one of the mitigating factors for a downward departure is when the victim was the initiator or they kind of provoked the incident. The victim admitted that it was consensual. The judge believed that it was consensual. It wasn't a situation where Jeremy was hunting someone down. And because the judge gave him a downward departure, she more than likely believed that the victim was also initiating contact with him. The original story is very different from the fabricated story that you heard almost 20 years later, there is a saying, and law enforcement may not admit this because they hate Jeremy so much, but there is a saying, and it goes, the first version is usually the real version. This is not a situation where a victim is silent for 20 years and then finally speaks out. That's not what we're dealing with here. This person had multiple opportunities to speak up and mention all the things about people inserting things into them, hair being cut, shaved, bologna sandwiches. They had an opportunity when it first happened. They had an opportunity when the case was reopened four years later when they were actually an adult. They could have said something then. They waited 20 years to talk about this and then they're laughing while they're talking about it. That was the creepy part. So that was when people started to reach out to us and they were like, I cannot believe that they were sitting there and like talking about it so casually. And there were parts where they were laughing about all these horrific things that Jeremy did. Like, why are you laughing about it if it was so horrible? Like, what the fuck is so funny? What's the joke? But again, this was around the time that Viddler still had a job, Ramsey was still with Motors, and they were just feeding bullshit every day, every week to YouTubers. This was sort of at the height of the Jeremy DeWitt craze. And so they probably loved all the attention. They probably loved the fact that they were being these nasty assholes in the background using these people to make Jeremy look a certain way. I still have my doubts that the person who was in this fake Barbara Walters interview was the actual victim in the case because the information that I've been told, because you guys know that people feed me bullshit too, the information that I was told is that the actual victim has their own bullshit going on. Apparently her baby daddy or one of her baby daddies has this trial coming up next year because he was selling dope or doing some stupid shit that he got locked into and he has a lengthy record himself. I would think that someone who has multiple children by multiple men would sort of have their own shit going on and not have time to sit down for a goofy ass YouTube interview. I would hope that's not what's happening. And I, I don't know, I just have my doubts that it was the actual victim in the case. Again, it's not really a case that I talk about, you know, the 2005 case. I didn't know Jeremy then. I can't really say yay or nay. I can just go by what I'm seeing in the court documents. And what I'm seeing in the court documents goes with what Jeremy has always told me. And what I'm hearing about, you know, this interview is completely like out of left field. It's not even close to what is in the transcripts. So this video was definitely for the people who support me, but asked me questions like, well, how could you be with him after all of the horrible things that he did? And I just wanna show them the truth, not, okay, this is an opinion. 
this is an actual court document. People lie every day, but I just don't think that the judge, I don't believe that the defense attorneys, I don't believe that the prosecutors are lying about the facts of that case. This is actually really easy to find. You can find it underneath the actual court case itself. A lot of it is obviously going to be confidential because it was dealing with a minor but things after she turned 18 are very public okay so that's it i thought this video was gonna be very short but it's going into the 15 minute mark um i'm also going to upload another video if not this week then it'll be before the new year and um it's kind of off topic but not really it's a case that kind of pertains to public records and i thought it was pretty interesting the way that the defendant was trying to handle public records being released and i have some body camera footage and everything like that so i'm going to like i said upload that um in the next i don't know few days i'm sorry let me correct that this person is not a defendant this person is a suspect there is a difference anyway y'all i hope that you have a very merry christmas Happy holidays, happy Hanukkah, happy Kwanzaa, happy Chinese New Year. Listen, I don't know. Happy everything, okay?